Yes. And he went over with Luger back, I don't know, it was 2004 or something like that, five. And uh, uh, he was detained at the Perm Airport in uh, Siberia over a passport irregularity. But nonetheless, uh, I just uh, kind of, it's just amazing how these, all of these little uh, series of incidents that seem to connect. It, it, and, and Obama was, again, involved in that process and, again, involved in the process in the larger sense. And the other part of this as well, I just want to throw this in before I forget, the argument that no uranium ever left American soil, uh, you know, that that's all of the, uh, a BS fraud story or, you know, a conspiracy theory is so untrue. It, you know, that uranium one didn't have the uh, lease or the transportation authority to do so. Well, it was all done, as you had pointed out, through the logistics company that the uranium the uranium left the United States. So I think it's important, a couple of important points to bring up. But I was just curious whether you heard about uh, Obama's role with Luger back back in the day. No, I, I hadn't heard any about anything about that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I just I, I just you made me think of that. And I, I often wonder, even back then, if they weren't sending something up to um, to get to this point today, you know, just with the Russia, but, but I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but some great points. Oh, there. no, it's fine. Yeah, no, I, I think they have been setting this up for a very long time. And going back to my point about how I think that they, they really set up the system as perfectly as they could. The one thing that would have wrecked that system is if Hillary lost and she did, and none of this would have ever been found out if she had won. Because so many of these documents wouldn't have been unsealed. Most of this would have been kept from the mainstream. I mean, e- even investigative reporters, like, we go off of government release documents sometimes, and we wouldn't have access to those if Hillary had gotten elected. So the system was set up in a way where they were covering their own tails, and now they're really not. <laughs> they can't. Good point. Yeah. Which is why we see the the Mueller, um, the rabid nature of Mueller and his people, and yeah, yeah and even the the mainstream media just getting all all uh, twisted over not reporting what's important. Go ahead, Joe. And, and uh, you're right. If Hillary Clinton would have got elected, we wouldn't have seen any of this. And we were talking with a few of our last guests about how she lost the election that was rigged for her to win, and still, I, I the email investigation she should have been prosecuted the obvious cover-ups of the fbi and other organizations working in tandem with the media uh, as you said created a perfect storm where she was able to get away with this and we, we talk about this day in and day out and nothing happens as i said uh, already this episode that these people peter strauchs and others are still working in the fbi rosenstein still in the doj and nothing seems to be uh, moving forward or getting done and it's very frustrating but uh, i'd like to move to an, a talking point you have on your sheet here about skull and bones it's kind of oh, yes. out of out of left field here from what we were talking about but i'd like to hear uh, what you have to say about it well skull and bones it's really interesting because i don't live too far from there and i've thought a lot about going and just visiting and doing a video like right outside of their their temple because for people that don't know, the Skull and Bones is a secret society at Yale, and they admit 15 new members every year. And they, they weren't admitting uh, women for a long time. And then I think it was like in the mid 90s they started. But it's this I mean, it, it's like you talk about the Council on Foreign Relations, you have the Trilateral Commission, you have the Club of Rome. OK, and then you have the Skull and Bones. And the thing that's different about the Skull and Bones is that that is a conspiracy society. Like, that is a secret society. Council on Foreign Relations, you can look up their membership list. Um, Trilateral Commission, you can look up their membership list. Bilderberg Group, you can do the same thing. Skull and Bones, you really can't. And that's why we only know of a handful of people who have been in the Skull and Bones that, that are very powerful people. And it's usually because people dig far enough back and find this stuff out. But the person that broke a lot of this stuff was Anthony Sutton back, oh God, I think it was 1983. Someone anonymously sent him a bunch of, of uh, pamphlets and whatnot from the group. And the thing is that the Bonesmen, which is the Skull and Bones members are called the Bonesmen, they have like, there's like 500 members estimated to be alive right now, and only about 100 are actively pursuing the agenda of the group. 
So you have like 400 people who don't really care. And if you have one of those people who's still getting, you know, information from the group and they're just like, okay, well, I'm going to give it to this guy, then, you know, secrets out. And when you look at the way that the, that the skull and bones really operates their society, it's so much more effective than anything that would be above ground. And that's because the way that they, they set their system up is to help each other. Like Mm -hmm. if you have two people applying for the same job and they have the same exact credentials, or even if they don't, if they, if you just have two people applying for a job and one is a bonesman and you're a bonesman, that other bonesman gets the job and you do that for enough generations and you end up with something like John Kerry and George Bush uh, Jr. or George W. Bush who are in the 20, 2004 election together and you have bonesmen versus bonesmen. So they're both pushing for the same agenda, but they make it look like it's division. And that's, that's one of the tenets of their group is to fake chaos. It, it's to further your own agenda through this manufactured division. And that's something that you don't usually see in a lot of other groups. And that's what we're seeing today applied in, in many circles today where the skull and bones presence exists, which, which is rather interesting. And it's interesting numbers that you mentioned. And not to mention the uh, spiritual angle on this and all in the other secret societies that we talk about, whether it's the political ones or, uh, you know, you have the, the skull and bones and uh, the Bilderbergs to, bohemian grove it's um obviously a a network of people and i believe it is uh evil in nature as uh these they do crazy things and worship skulls and owls and devils and mock human sacrifices it's really crazy but these are the people who are are running at their top levels of government so when we look back at what we opened uh when we were talking about with you these investigations the corruptions uh it's no surprise that you know these same people who are involved in these groups and organizations are the ones also guilty of committing these crimes uh, against the president and the American people. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, it's, it's pretty shocking when you look at some of the things that the bones men have orchestrated throughout history. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty terrifying. I mean, they, like you look at something like the Vietnam war and you had bones men on one side who were pro Vietnam war and you had bones men who were anti Vietnam war and the anti Vietnam war ones were, were, controlling the media to a degree. And that's why we had so many service members come home from Vietnam and just get spit on and hated was because they were creating this chaos. And there's better examples where they use it to, to further their own agenda. But it even goes so far where if you start looking into this a bit more, you see that the whole communist capitalist rivalry or, or like that, that battle is manufactured to a large degree. And like you had communists in Granada that were supporting some capitalist, uh, it, the name escapes me currently, but it's some capitalist company that, that the communists in Granada were supporting back in like, I think it was the seventies or the eighties. Oh, so, okay. Uh, yep. 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 So it's just, it's, it's tough. And like you have, Oh God, it, there was another one that I was reading about in the, the skull and bones book that I have where you had a, communist there were communists from cuba who were defending capitalists oh god i forget where but you just you have these relationships that don't make sense if you buy if you believe the the communist capitalist paradigm basically so that that ideology overrides the the uh, political biases that one might have Uh, yeah yeah I, i get that okay very interesting. And by the way, I love your your YouTube channel, um, the right right media, the right media for YouTube and the right media dot org for your website. Um, fantastic job you've done on some of the the medias or the the YouTube uh, videos, including your latest. Uh, I would direct everyone to to go there and to subscribe. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. I just want to say thank you for your knowledge and passing along your knowledge uh, to, to us about Uranium One. It's it's difficult to, to really carry in a conversation with a lot of people because they don't have that, that level of information like you do. And, and it's good to, good to find like-minded people uh, like yourself on this. And very interesting take with Skull and Bones. In the remaining couple of minutes that we've got, anything that you want to cover that we haven't covered uh, just in this 
in this uh, segment because we're gonna have you back we'd love to have you back if you come back <laughs> well i'd love to be back this is a lot of fun um yeah there, there is one thing that i'm covering quite a bit uh, i'm doing more research on it and i'm looking to put out a video on it hopefully this weekend but that is alex soros because it struck me as weird that he's donating more to democratic causes than his father even though his father is touted around as being the this you know this new world order, you know, terrible guy. And I don't, I mean, by no means is George Soros a good guy, but his son is someone who should definitely be on everyone's radar. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that you notice when you start looking into Alex Soros is just the number of people that he's connected to. I mean, you have him meeting privately with Tim Kaine. He's pictured with Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Al Franken, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, the list goes on and on. It, It even goes so far as to, like he's talking to the European commissioner of justice and the UN secretary general. He has access to these incredibly high level people and he pushes these left, the leftist agenda constantly. So that's, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And he's the, the deputy chair of his father's open society foundation. And this was a real kicker for me. So the president of the open society foundation is Patrick Gaspard. And he said that the South African Constitution is more inclusive than the U.S. Constitution. So that's the kind of ideology that's running Soros's foundation that his son is tied into. So that's I have more to research incredible. on it, but definitely going to be putting out a video soon. All right. We'll look forward to that yeah. report. And uh, obviously, these people seem to be able to just print money. They're throwing it around everywhere. And uh, he's taken after his father, I guess, even going a step further. Ben Shields, The Right Media. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Ben. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Come back. Absolutely. All right. It was a great week. We are out of time. Uh, Had a lot of guests. Had a a lot of great discussions. And we will be back Monday, the Doug Hagman Radio Show, the Hagman Daily Show, then the Hagman Report. And by the way, I think I might be, you're on a show tomorrow. The Sharpening Report. The Sharpening Report. And I think I'm going to be hosting Alex Jones uh, or be a guest, I I think, on Sunday. I'm not sure. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Introducing McDonald's new one, two, three dollar menu with favorites for one, two, or three dollars. So now you can save for a a weekend getaway with the husband and kids. Uh, sure. Especially if we leave the kids at home with grandma, of course. Build whatever meal you want with favorites on McDonald's new one, two, three dollar menu. Get any size soft drink for just a dollar. A two piece buttermilk crispy tender is only two dollars, or a sausage McMuffin with egg just three dollars. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal.